Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. Another the paid request, this time from Brooklyn. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. It could be for, or over there, wherever the info box is. It could be for pretty much any type of video. Pay, uh, reviews, re-reviews, commentaries, video game let's tries, playthroughs, whatever the case may be. This is for Fatal Charm from 1990. Which I never heard of before. I'm like, what the hell is this movie? And then I looked it up and I'm like, whoa, this is just a 4.7 out of 10. Ooh, boy, this is going to be a, a underrated classic. Granted, there are films I like that have low IMDb ratings, so that's not really fair to say. I like Watchers, too, with Mark Senior from 1990. That, I think, has a lower rating than this, which I highly disagree with. At least I think it does. But this film deserves it. I think it deserves lower. I had to look up a bit of story on this. Now apparently. Forgive me if I'm wrong. But apparently. This film was being set up in 1989. And it was going to be... I guess the first director was Peter Medak, who was the guy who directed The Changeling with George C. Scott, which I love The Changeling. And I guess somewhere along the way, he got replaced by Fritz Tiersch. Now, Fritz Tiersch, Fritz is the guy that did the very first Children of the Corn. Now, I don't mind Children of the Corn, the first one. I know a lot of people hate it. I don't mind it. I don't. But it's not the Changeling. <laughs> so it's a pretty big downgrade. It's the same. And the guy who directed the Changeling? Well, granted, the guy who directed the Changeling also did Species, too. So, years after this. So maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but I love the Changeling. But anyway, Fritz Tiersch would go on to direct this. But I don't know if he got the film taken away. I don't know if the film got re-edited. I don't know if the film got any additional photography he didn't want. I don't know what happened, but it was done filming in 1990, but it did not debut until 1992 on Showtime. And if you look at the directing credit, it says Alan Smithy. Now, for those who don't know, Alan Smithy was a name used at the time where if a director, if he was able to, did not want his name on the film because he thought it was so bad, so terrible, so not his vision. Boom, Alan Smithy. Now, granted, you couldn't do that all the time, so there had to be certain stipulations, but, you know, there are a few films that got the Alan Smithy monitor. I think one was... The Cheech Marin film, Shrimp on a Barbie. Which was there. I mean, I I don't think it was the worst film ever. I think there's a lot of worse films that should have gotten Ellen Smithy. But I mean, it's not Cheech Marin's great. Born in East L.A. was a lot better. A lot of the Cheech and, Fun, Cheech and Chon films were a lot better. Anyway, I'm, I digress. So, Peter Medap to Fritz Tiersch to now Fritz doesn't want his name on it, so it's Alan Smithy. And there's some recognizable people in the cast. You got Christopher Atkins, who's in the Blue Lagoon. I remember him from this film called Shakma, which I actually rather enjoy. Because, like, a group of medical students, and they're playing this kind of LARPing, which is kind of ahead of its time. Because this was like, was it 19? I mean, I think it came out the same year as Fatal Charm did, although Fatal Charm was made earlier. I think it was like 1990 Shakma. But it's like playing this LARPing where they're pretending to be these kids. Not dressed up, but they have these notes and goals. And they're supposed to go over here and go over there. I mean, well, again, that's ahead of its time. There's people that do that nowadays. Only much more intricate with costumes. Where... Now I'm trying to review Shakma because I like that movie a hell lot better than this. Getting back to this. 
But anyway, I like Shakma quite a bit. And... I'm trying to think what else he did. He did Beach the Movie. He did that film A Night in Heaven. A Night in Heaven was pretty awful. It was Weirdly enough, directed by the same guy who did Rocky, John G. Alvidson, and The Cry Kid. I'm like, really? You did this film? Anyway, Christopher Atkins had the looks. I think people assumed he'd be a bigger star than he, he was. But I don't mind Christopher Atkins. I know a lot of people don't like him. I don't mind him. I think in the right role, like Shockma, I think he'd be rather good. Here... He really doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue in the first half of the movie. You know, a line here, a line there. Uh, also stars a lady called Amanda Peterson, who I think was in the film Can't Buy Me Love. I think so. Sally, she passed away. Was it 2015? I know she, she passed away, which is too bad. You also have Andrew Robinson, who was the killer in the first Dirty Harry film. He was in Sylvester Stallone's Cobra. He was the he was in the first Hellraiser. Been a lot of stuff. He plays the sheriff. Uh, James Remar is in the film, playing Lou, the lead girl's. Her mom is going out with a guy. And that's the guy, that guy's played by James Remar. Laura Parn Lincoln, who the star of Friday the 13th, Part 7, New Blood, she's in this as our lead character's buddy. And I, the premise of the film, I know I'm seven minutes in, is he's a, Christopher Atkins is in jail, he's on trial, he's on trial for the accusation of strangling these women, assaulting them, doing things to them, and then strangling them to death. He says he's innocent, a lot of people don't think he is, and our lead girl is obsessed with him. He watches the, she watches the news, she has some weird lines of dialogue like, how does someone that sexy or that hunty or ever assault a lady? And you're thinking, wow, this is really, what the hell is this girl's problem? But that happens a lot. I mean, you look up info, there's a lot of prisoners, like serial killers, or, or assaulters, that get love letters constantly from people. I'm like, what? Uh, or, I mean, someone mentioned the fact of, imagine someone who's on YouTube, TikTok, whatever social influencer and they're accused of something doing horrible something bad something terrible they'll have people outrightly defending them nope 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 that can't be the case you know it seems like 99.999 percent chance nope can't be the case nope 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 even to an obsessive point of defense so that is kind of easier to believe sally than it should be It was interesting that as she's watching the news, the reporters looking at Christopher Atkins and then goes to Cameron goes, This bitch is something about his sexy charm. I don't know if that's really professional to say that, but apparently it isn't in, in this movie. And then the 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 film I honestly thought it was really damn boring. Like really boring for the most part. Because it's the lead girl having issues with her mom, because her mom doesn't understand her. And then you get the idea that her mom's boyfriend, played by James Remar, will hit on her, kiss her, may have done worse. We didn't see that, but you get that it may have happened. And then later she tells her mom about this. And even though her mom is a police officer, she disregards her daughter who accuses that your boyfriend did something horrible to her, you don't listen to your daughter, and you smack her in the face. And I'm like, what kind of cop are you? 
Hmm? The T-Stone cops have more merit than you. And most people don't know, probably don't know who the hell they are. God, horrible cop. I'll talk about that later. She's a horrible cop. And not that good of a mom either. This person. Damn. So, our lead character, she's having troubles at home. She have these weird, hazy, soft focus, Vaseline smeared dreams that she's with Christopher Atkins and they're going ready to do a dotty style and then he's ready to choke her and then she's like, ooh, I'm like, great, more of these soft, you know, focus Vaseline. I don't know how the hell you describe it. It looked ugly as hell. And then soon enough, Christopher Atkins is found guilty. He's going to be sent to the gas chamber. And there's a, a certain someone I recognize who's in jail there as well. And it brought a smile to my face. I'm like, wait a minute, is that Tin Foray? It is, all right. One of my favorite films is the original Dawn of the Dead. I love Tin Foray. I'm like, there's Tin Foray. I guess because he did stuff to women, but also maybe because he's white as well. Him, Ken Frey, and the others want to beat him up, stab him. I think Ken Frey says the line, I won't cut your dick off and shove it down your throat. But another guy saves Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins. <laughs> Do you imagine with Tom Atkins? Christopher Atkins. If Tom Atkins would be a very different movie. Maybe some would say better movie. A guy saves Christopher Atkins from Tim Foray and his group. Tim Foray and them leave. And the guy pretty much tells Christopher Atkins, Chris Atkins, you're my boy toy. Now sing the Shawn Michaels song. Not your boy toy. Yes, you are, bitch. You're gonna suck his dick. Suck the dick. You're gonna be a punk, bitch. You punk, bitch. Boom, 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 boom. Chris Atkins. No blue lagoon. The only blue is down the toilet when you get smeared. And, uh, I, I forgot what that's called when you don't. I can't believe I forgot the term where you dunk someone's head down the toilet. They swirly. You did a swirl. You down and dirty. Better pay before ten for a. I'm. I fucked it all up. Who gives a shit? Me trying to sing named Jack. Just like this movie, Jack Squat. Fuck it. So the Atkins, I saved you, but you don't be my boy toy. You don't be my bitch. And the stuff at home with the lead girl is really damn boring. Ashley, what's her name? Amanda Peterson is there. But I don't really think that she's that... I don't think it's the actress's fault, but the way her character is written, she's not a strong character. She seems like a very dumb, moronic, idiot character. She always seems a bit whiny. Like, granted, well, what's happened with James Remar, I can understand her... a bit of her struggle, of course. But at the same time, it just... It feels like there's not much for her to, to do other than have these st stupid, hazy dreams... The mom finds out that she been, and they stamp over the idea of her. They should have showed her first writing a letter, and then Chris getting his first letter and reading it, and maybe build that up where there's this back and forth where he reads the letter, he enjoys it, or he writes back to her, and he she writes back to him, and vice versa. And you build it up, you build it up because then you see. 
how she falls in love with him and more so in a way where she reads his words and we could hear his words and see her reactions to reading these you would think wonderful charming words and him reading this and keeping them up like build up that relationship so when it all goes to put in the third act it makes it feel as if it's more something to it but it does really do that because it really stimps over the letter writing it's like okay he's in jail then Ken Frey almost killed him now all of a sudden they've written like a dozen letters or whatever to each other and the mom doesn't believe the daughter and slaps their daughter even though she says that hey your boyfriend James Remore did all this stuff sexually to me but you don't even want to take one hint of maybe that's true what kind of cop are you Paul Bob Mall Cop had more of merit than you So when the mom finds these letters, she gets the lead girl to the sheriff, Andrew Robinson, who shows her pictures of what happened to the other victims. She's like, no, he wouldn't do that. Meanwhile, in jail, Tim Frey tries to kill Chris Atkins again. The cops are coming. There's a struggle. Someone pushes Tim Frey. And our Chris Atkins accidentally stabs Tim Frey. Then he's sent to a county jail for a bit of protection. Yeah, these two guys, they faith themselves, one of them faith themselves being sick to get the guards escape. They grab Chris Atkins and have him, I don't know why they grabbed Christopher Atkins. I don't know why they cared. I mean, you don't have much time. You need to leave. You barely know who Christopher Atkins is. One of them says, oh, you're on the news. You're famous. Still... Why do you want to let him go? And even Chris Act is like, no, no, I don't want to go. And the guy literally has to drag him and drag him out and drag him down. And I'm sitting there going, why do you want Chris acting so damn badly? You thought that was going to lead to something. It doesn't. We don't use him as a hostage. We don't use him as something. No. I just, just the kindness of that criminal's heart. I need to save you. Why? I don't know. So why, especially the one guy who was so adamant that did Chris act is out of the jail, they were answered. Not at all. So news spreads that Chris Atkins has escaped. And then it doesn't really do this whole thing of, is Chris Atkins the killer? Is he not the killer? As soon as you watch the film, you look at the poster, you look at the, the gist of it, you know Chris Atkins is the killer. There's never any question in your mind that Chris Atkins is not the killer. So that it destroys any amount of suspense you could have had. So then, oh, yep, he's the killer. He, this guy's getting a blowjob. He just strangled. And instead of the woman, I don't know, leaving, grabbing something, and like going and smacking Chris in the face, she's more like leaning back going, eh, eh, de, 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 eh, eh. That's not going to do anything, lady. Claw his eyes out with your fingernails or something. Be like, I did, I did, I did, I did this. By the way, this is a flashlight, you're wondering. From when we didn't have power and stuff from the hurricane. But like, da, 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 da. Do something. Do it. I mean, go up behind him, kick him in the nuts or something. Now, da, da, da. What are you doing, lady? Do you. Maybe his, maybe your boyfriend's dick was that bad. It's like, I don't really want to save him because that way I don't have to suck his dick again. Then leave, lady. Get the hell out of Dodge. Go find help. Something. But no. Pretty much there's talk, there's a, the lead uh, lady is out trying to have lunch with Larpar Lincoln. Christopher Atkins thinks Larpar Lincoln is the girl he's looking for, but it's not. 
one thing leads to another. There's this whole bit with Lord Part Lincoln getting stalked. I swear to God, though, I don't know if she died. Because you see, Triss is kind of sneaking around and staring. There's a bit where Lord Part Lincoln is kind of looking at like a reflection, like a little beast, like in a van or something. Turns, and when she turns, the camera goes, phew. And then I swear to God, we never see Laura Parn LinkedIn again. Now, for Brooklyn, I apologize. Maybe there's a scene I missed that was a quick shot of her dead body, or hey, we found her body, and there's some dialogue. If so, I apologize. I, I fucked up. But I do not remember what happened to Laura Parn Lincoln. I do not remember them showing her body or if she was dead. I'm assuming she is. I'm like, did Tris Tris act to say it? But I was so damn bored, I forgot it. Sometimes what happens, you're just so damn bored, you forget crucial plot points that maybe the movie did have, but it was so damn tedious, I just goes over my bald head. So if Brooklyn's watching, you let me know. Did we see where Laura Parr Lincoln? That she died, like her dead body or something? Did we see that? Was it shown? Was it told? Is the character alive? I don't know. Brooklyn, do you know? Please tell me. And I actually would have preferred her in the lead. Does I, I like Laura Parr Lincoln more from Part of the New Blood. I think she would have been better than Amanda Peterson, but that's just me. Chris Atkins gets to the lead girl's house, stabs James Remar in the stomach. There you go. Seemingly like such a nothing role for James Remar. I mean, this is a guy that was in The Bad Guy in 48 Hours. He was in The Warriors. But, yeah. After screwing up not getting hits from the movie Aliens... Because he had a drug problem. He got caught and then he got deported. Because they were filming overseas. He would continue to work but. Didn't seem as much higher projects as before. At least that's my take on it. So, Chris Atkins goes to find the girl, and they talk for a bit, and he tries to seduce her. But immediately, she's like, nope, I want nothing to do with him. And it didn't seem like there was any build-up to that, because she was so adamant. He's innocent, he's innocent, he's innocent, he's innocent, he's innocent. People were crazy, he's innocent. And you've had multiple hazy, weird, wet dreams of this guy. So he comes to see you, and then he's like, he wants to kiss. Now you don't want to do it. Then why the hell would you think about it for months or however long it took for you to write all these letters? If she was, like, gun ho about it, and then let me prepare, but then, I don't know, she gets a phone call. Or she sees something. She sees a, a speck of blood that Chris did not get off his shoe or piece of clothing or gets a phone call nick of time so yeah it'd be convenient but then about Laura Parr Lincoln's body or something to give her a little bit of uh oh like she notices something like there you go have her be like maybe a smarter than you know who her terror seems really dumb make her a little bit smarter where she knows there's a little detail about Chris Atkins and gives her doubts. Go, oh shit, maybe something like that. Like she's doing something. She knows is again, like maybe like a speck of blood or a speck of something. No, no, that she's just like, no, nah, I don't want to do it anymore. Why? Because the script, uh, we're we're at the end. We gotta get the hell out of here. Okay. So they're trying to fight. Daughter, you know, Lee Terry's screaming. The mom hears this, goes in. 
Now she has a gun. She's a horrible cop. You're supposed to check your corners, check the rooms. No. Instead, she just goes up to the door. There's Chris Atkins. She's not able to shoot him. He's able to beat the hell out of her and throw her ass down the stairs. The lead girl's trying to escape. Goes to see if her mom's okay. I don't know if her mo if the mom character lived or died. Great, I don't care. Uh, well, if I didn't care, I wouldn't have asked. I tear out of curiosity. But that's another thing. It seems like, well, she's crying. to the mom. But does that mean she's dead or that she she's badly hurt and I needed to, no I don't know if I don't know 100% if Laura Parr Lincoln is dead I'm assuming so I don't know if the mom's dead I'm, I guess I'll assume that as well oh yeah they do they have I almost forgot about this the potential future boyfriend this lead girl has where he appears a handful of times so that really give anything much substantial to say and near the end it's like hey I need a ride to the school okay I'll do what I did my truck fixed that none of that mattered does that guy does nothing it's not like she's being chased but then here's the potential boyfriend he tries to run down Chris Atkins or give interference or him and Chris get into a fight or Nothing happened. Like, you didn't need this guy because he didn't accomplish anything. Because what happens is Chris Atkins chases her, chases her some more. Or before that, in the house, he does his wannabe Jack Nicholson shining where going through the door, you see his head near the door, right from the say, here's Johnny. Chasing her, she falls down for a bit. Chase her into the woods, wherever the hell the, she went to, I forget. Know this area where she's able to get a bit of material and then a flare and able to douse Chris Atkins on, on fire. Decent stonework. Person on fire. But soon after, they go into the water and the cops come and... I don't even know if Andrew Robinson is there. As well, says he's the sheriff. The potential boyfriend finally gets there. Oh, thanks for doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. So at the end, I'm thinking... This potential boyfriend was useless. He didn't do anything. Law Par Lincoln, did I miss the cut of you know, her dead body being found? I missed it. Maybe I did. Is her mom dead? And you don't even get the satisfying, okay, he's this guy's a killer, but what's his comeuppance? He has a dead one, because he gets set on fire, but then he goes to the water, then he gets back up, and he's like, he's arrested, but he's like staring at her in almost like a smiling way, even though he's being arrested. And I'm like, you don't even get a satisfying death of the killer in this movie? Usually this part of the course, like this... Oh, it's time for the dear... They've been terrorized and terrorized and terrorized some more. And now it's time for you to take revenge. And you kick him in the nuts. Or you body slam him. Or you tear his head off. Or you shoot him in the face. Or... No. So, yeah. This is just a boring-ass film. That doesn't feel like a whole lot happens. Some unanswered questions. Not even the satisfying list. Kill the killer. Maybe if you're a diehard Christopher Atkins fan. Well, see, he does have much dialogue in the first half. In the second half, he does have a bit more. A little bit of bug-eyed type of performance. Well, I've seen better. I've seen much worse. I, I, it is what it is. Andrew Robinson kind of wasted. His character didn't really serve a whole lot of importance to the story. Yeah, Amanda Peterson, rest in peace to her. But I think with the script she was given, I don't know. Just made her seem like a really, really dumb character. 
And, you know, I can see, I'd love to know the backstory. The backstory sounds much more interesting. Peter Mita, what was his initial premise, idea of the story before? Was he fired? Did he quit? Did he leave? And then same with Fritz Tiersch, like, did you want the film done a certain way? Did you want to test it? Like, what did you want to do that you were not allowed to do, which made you take the name off the movie? There's not like, you know, the actors to do that and take their name off the movie. I guess if you worked really, really hard at it, maybe, but, you know, very rarely that happens. So if their name are on it, your name should be on it, too. Yeah. With that said, I can't believe I talked 30 minutes for this. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.